So I want to tell you a few things about the Congo that I didn't want to tell you before you ate because the, the world of the Congo is a very disturbing world at times and the facts are um, disturbing. I just I want to begin by saying just a few of the numbers, even though the numbers in the Congo are always changing and we don't have any hard numbers. But it is estimated, for example, in one year that 400,000 women were raped in the Congo. That's in one year. Girls as young as four years old, babies, women as old as 80 are being raped. The kind of atrocities that occur to women and their bodies are so horrific because there are often gang rapes, there are often multiple objects used that destroy women's vaginas, that destroy their uteruses, that destroy their rectums, so that many women end up with fistula, which is a situation where women aren't able to hold their pee or their poop, and they end up leaking, which is a horrible, horrible illness. Um, I want to tell you one story about a girl who I met when I first went to the City of Joy, and I wish I could tell you this was an atypical story, but it's not an atypical story. Um, she was eight years old when the militias took her, they took her father in one direction, her mother in another, and her in a third. Um, they killed her father, they raped her mother, and they held her for two weeks, the militias, and they raped her every day, groups of militias. When they returned her to her family, she, had, um, she was leaking, and she couldn't hold her pee. And when I met her, I interviewed her, and she was the most beautiful girl, with the most beautiful seeking spirit, with such forgiveness in her heart in spite of everything she had been through. And I went to hug her at the end of the interview and um, she sort of squiggled away out of my arms. And I realized that no one had hugged her um, since she'd been raped because they were scared that she would pee on them. So when I grabbed her, I said I didn't care if um, what was going on. I put her on my lap and I hugged her and she peed on me. And I have to tell you in that moment, I felt really and truly like I was baptized. I have since heard um, story after story after story of women who have suffered atrocities to their bodies that are so grotesque and so heinous, I, I really don't even repeat most of the stories that I hear. And I will tell you that if we as human beings allow those atrocities to continue, in those numbers, it, you know, it, it is estimated that six million people have died in the Congo. That's the amount of the Holocaust that is happening with technology, with internet, with radios, with television. So we all know what's going on and we still remain numb to the cries and to the distress and suffering. Um, at City of Joy, I'm really proud that we have women from all over Congo and we are building a place where in any given year after this first group, we will have 90 women every six months. They will be trained, as Christine said, in leadership, in civics, in communication, in self-defense. They will be healed, they will be in psychotherapy, they will develop projects, they will de we, will, we are hopefully gonna help some kind of economic piece that they develop and take back to th their communities, something they can develop economically. Um, there are all kinds of amazing programs that are in the works. And then what will happen is women will go back to their communities, they will go back in twos and threes, and they will create little centers in their communities where they spread what they've learned. One of the um, basis of cho choosing women at City of Joy is that they're based on their desire and willingness to be leaders and to share what they've learned. And so when women go back to their communities, their job is to then pass on what they've learned and to teach what they've learned. So when you invest in one woman at the City of Joy, you're investing in a community. You're investing in hundreds of women because they then become the vehicle through which other women learn. And I really believe, and this has been my experience in V-Day for 14 years, that there are what we call around the planet vagina warriors. And what those women are, are women who have been through enormous suffering and enormous violence, and rather than giving up or becoming mass murderers, they actually transform that suffering and grieve that suffering and then devote their lives to making sure it doesn't happen to other people. And you can't control those women because they don't do what they do for money. Lynn Lucy doesn't do what she does for money. Christine doesn't do what she does for money. Annika, even if they get paid, they would do this because it's in their hearts and their souls. Sandy doesn't do it. Helena doesn't do it. Um, 
people do what they do because they don't want what happened to them to happen to other people. And if we create an army of vagina warriors who then go out into Congo and are transforming their communities and their neighborhoods, we really truly have the possibility of transforming and creating revolution from the ground up where women take back their resources, they take back their country, and they take back their bodies. And that's the vision and that's the mission behind the City of Joy. And I believe if we can successfully do this in the Congo, it can be a template which we can then take everywhere and really create model revolutionary communities for women from the ground up who control the destinies of their own lives and the lives of their sisters and brothers. So with that, I, I just want to say um, um, it is really um, important, and I, I said this recently, you know, we are so privileged here in the West. We are so, 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 so privileged. Um, it's a shame sometimes, I, I feel, to live with such luxury when people live with nothing. But I've made a commitment um, since my last trip to Congo that I'm going to give half of everything I have away. And it's the best decision I ever made. Because every day I look now and I can see that if I feel good, half of what I feel good, somebody else is feeling good. So I'm going to urge all of you, um, if you feel that your money's disappearing, it probably is, and that's a good thing, because we're meant to disappear. We're meant to have everything go away in the end. And to reach into your hearts and reach into your souls and give, because everything you give to City of Joy, I promise you, will be multiplied by the depth and gratitude and willingness and beauty of the women that you're giving to. Thank you very much.